Hello and welcome to Developer's Party. As a budding developer, we are all taught to write code, understand algorithm, create automations and many more, which ultimately inclines towards coding at all levels. But the things we are not taught in college and school is the art of debugging. Here's what I mean about that. In a development environment, you are not always entitled to only code. There are other parts of the job which are to be taken care of even before you start coding. And one of the major and less spoken about task is that of debugging an application. So today we will speak about the art of debugging. Debugging an application has a varied scope which directly depends on the role you perform in the development life cycle. If you are a web application developer then it's mostly related to the interaction of the front end with the back end business logic implementation and app security but if you are from infra then it's all related to network calls server starts automations and infrastructure security if you are a mobile application developer then it's about device version client permissions and other aspects of api integrations so depending on your role in the application development the process and tool of your debugging will change so in this video we will speak about the common process to be followed as a web application developer and the tools we should use to aid debugging so if you are debugging a well developed rest api and if you observe some failure then you should always check for the response code of that specific api Response code broadly represents the state of the API like if we get response status as 404 which stands to not found then it indicates that the API did not find the specific asset which you are requesting for or the API itself doesn't exist in this scenario you should verify if the asset you are looking for is available and the API you are trying to access is functional if you get a response as 401 which stands to unauthorized then you are missing authorization token or session token or tokens are expired so get the authorization token sorted if you get a response as 500 which indicates internal server error then there is some scenario in the code which is failing and is not allowing the application to complete your request if you get a response as 400 which sounds to bad request then there is something that you have missed while calling the api or you have some malformed request data which is not understood by the backend process these are some of the most common responses you will find when using restful api some not so common but useful error response code are 409 which sounds to conflict which comes mostly when you call a post or put api which is responsible to create or update records and the data already exist in the system and the other one is 429 too many request which arises if there is a rate limit assigned to the api and has exceeded that limit if the api isn't properly developed and has poor rest response structure then you should be checking out the route in your backend code and look for any server log it's always a best practice to keep error logs on production code Logs are one of the most important asset through which you could debug your application. Most of the backend application development framework has some sort of debugging logs available for implementation. Logs are basically text and messages printed out onto a file that can be read back when you need to debug an application lifecycle. An application has to log its activity as messages and those messages would be majorly classified as error. debug info and warning logs there are a lot of tools and services which can help you to read and respond to a log in the market one of the most commonly used group of tool is the elk stack which uses elastic search logstash and kibana elk helps you generate easy to read graphically representative view of the logs and gives you a broader view of your application it helps to integrate triggers at times of issues There is one more tool called as Splunk which helps in querying and filtering the historic log data and helps in processing and attaching triggers to the event. If you are using AWS you have a service called as CloudWatch which has some awesome features of monitoring and trigger handling for application and server logs. Another awesome tool for debugging a web application is Google Chrome's Inspect tool which helps in debugging web application which are HTML based. 
and helps in network call monitoring to examine API performance and error messages. It also helps in examining PWA compatibility using the Lighthouse tool and many more. Google Chrome also supports console logs printing which allows you to debug the front-end application by printing logs onto the console. These are some of the tools which can be used for debugging an application and I am sure that there are many different tools which can be used for debugging a specific application or a specific process in a life cycle of development. So please leave a comment if you want me to cover a specific tool, I will be happy to create a new video on it. So thank you for watching.